Hi and welcome to part two of the Technocamps activity pack on food chains. Um, so this video is going to talk you through how to create a model of a food chain on Scratch. So the first thing you need to do is go online and go to scratch.mit.edu and you will come to this homepage. Um, once you're here, you need to click on create and this will take us to a new page where we can build our program. So you'll probably get a page open like this. It does come with a tutorial, which you're free to watch, but if you don't want to, you can just click on the arrow to close that, and then you get the Scratch page ready to program on. Um, now, if you haven't used Scratch much before, we'll just have a quick look at what all the places are. So down this side here are all of the different code blocks that we can use. So we've got motion, looks, sound, events, control, sensing. Um, these are all ones that we're going to be using today. Um, and then this space in the middle is where you drag the code in um, and to build your code in this area here. So if I wanted to drag a piece of code in, you just click on it and drag it in there. If you want to get rid of a piece of code, you can just drag it back and it will disappear. So we pick the code block from here and drag it into here to be able to build a program. And then over in this box here is where the action takes place. So what you've coded happens over here. You can watch it in this screen here. Um, at the moment, you'll see we've got a little scratch cat in there at the moment down here called Sprite One. Um, I'm not going to need him for my food chain program today. So I'm just gonna click on this bin here and that will get rid of the cat there. So if you don't want to use the cat, you can get rid of it like that. So the first thing we need to do is to create our habitat, create the backdrop for our food chain. So I'm going to go down to this very bottom corner here where you've got this picture and click on choose a backdrop. And this will give you all sorts of different pictures um, of different landscapes and different places that you can choose from to be the backdrop of your program. Um, for mine, if you can go to outdoors, it's got all of the outdoor habitats that you might want to choose um, and you can pick the one you want there. So for my example today, I'm going to go with underwater, but you can pick whichever habitat you would like for your food chain. And the next thing I need to do is populate it with some sprites, which are the characters in our program. So I'm going to go down here to choose a sprite. And again, it comes up with all sorts of different ones that you can use. And I'm going to go to animals to find the ones that I want. Um, so under the water, I'm going to start with my first consumer. I'm going to go for this little beetle here who's going to represent some small crustaceans and things that live under the water. Now it's a bit big, <laughs> I'm sure you'll agree it looks a bit big in our thing there, so if we want to change the size of one of our sprites down here where we've got it selected you can go to this box where it says size and if you click in there you can get rid of 100 and you can change it to a smaller number and that will make your, your sprite a bit smaller. Um, so I've made it quite small because it's just a small beetle and you can then click on it and drag it to place it where you want within your program. The next sprite I'm going to add, so back to animals and I'm going to choose the predator of the beetles which is going to be a fish. Now you can see it flicking through different costumes there so you can change the costumes of some of the animals um, and I'll show you how to do that in a little while but I'm going to stick with the clownfish for now. Um, so again, it looks quite big, so I'm going to go into size and change it there to make it a bit smaller. Okay, it's a bit more fish-like. And then finally, I'm going to add one more predator for my fish. So go to animals again, and I'm going to go all the way down to the shark. Now, sharks are very big, but I think that's a bit too big as well. So once again, just going to change the size. And it's up to you how big you want each of your sprites to be. That's how we do it, by changing the size down there. So now we need to start programming our animals. And the first thing we want to do is have them move around the environment. So to program one of the animals, you click on it down here. Make sure it's got the blue box around it so you know which one you're programming. And then I'm going to start building the code over here. So to start the code, you need to have an event. So an event tells the program to start and I'm going to choose when the green flag is clicked. So the green flag's just up here. So what I'm telling my program is that when I click that green flag, the program will start in this box. Um, the next one I'm going to do is a looks one, this purple section here. And I'm going to scroll down 
and find one that says show. OK, so what this does is telling my sprite that while the program is running, I want it to be visible. I want to be able to see it, at least for now. Um, so that's why we need that show in there. The next step then is to find a control block, one of these orange ones, and I'm going to find a loop. So a loop makes an action repeat itself within your program, so you don't have to have big long lines of code. You can just put a loop in and it will repeat over and over again. So I'm going to pick a forever loop and put that in there. And what I'm going to want my beetle to do is to move around. So I'm going to go for motion. There's lots of different options for motion. But I'm going to tell my beetle to glide to a random position. OK, so that's that box is going in there. So what will happen is the beetle will just glide off to anywhere within the program space. Um, and I'm going to change that to tell it to glide for two seconds. And then between each movement, I'm going to want the beetle to have a little pause. So I'm going to find another control block, which is a wait. And I'm going to tell it to just wait for a second between each movement. So this is going to get my beetle to move around. And you can see there, there he goes. So it glides for two seconds to a random spot. And then it'll wait for one second before moving again. And because we're telling it to move randomly, it's sort of gliding at different speeds. We haven't given it instructions, it's just moving around randomly. So we now need to copy this code um, for each of the different animals within our habitat. So you can see I've got it there, I've already done this. So within my fish, it's got the same code and my shark has the same code as well. So this is telling each of my animals that they're going to move around the space here. And if you want to change the times that they're moving for to have them all moving a bit differently, you can, that's up to you, you can have a play with that. So now when I press play, you can see all three animals gliding around in the environment there in their habitat. So what we want to do now is program our animals to start interacting with each other, um, specifically as a food chain. So we want it to be that if a prey animal comes into contact with a predator animal, then it will disappear as if it's been eaten. So I'm going to start with my beetle and we're going to add to this code that we've already got here, um, getting it to move. So the first thing we need to do is to add another control block. So another one of these orange ones, and we're going to add it to the inside of this loop. And this time we want an if block, which is this one here. So what we're telling is that if something happens, then we want the, the uh, sprite to behave slightly differently. So we need to tell it what that if is. So for this one, we need to find a sensing block. So down here to the sensing blocks, and we're going to pick touching. So if we drag this one, you'll just fit it into that little diamond shape there, and it will expand to fit that in. But we don't want it touching the mouse pointer, we want it when it's touching its predator. So if I click on this drop down, you can see the names of the different uh, animals, the fish and the shark. Now the predator of the beetle is the fish. So I'm going to say if it's touching the fish, and what I want it to do is to disappear as though it's been eaten. So then we go back for another looks block. And if we slide down, you'll be able to find hide. So what will happen now is the beetle will move around as it was, but if it ends up touching a fish, then it will disappear like it's been eaten by the fish. We then want to do this same code, bit of code, add these same blocks to our fish. Um, but this is going to react to the shark because the shark is the predator of the fish. So again, we find that control block, that if, and we drag it in. We find the sensing block, Again, it's that touching one right at the top, but we're going to change it this time from mouse pointer to shark. So you have to change it to the predator of the animal that you're programming. So it's slightly different for each animal, depending on what its predator is. And again, I'm going to tell it that if it's touching the shark, it's going to hide. OK, so we can start this program and we can see them moving around. But the thing is, there's only a few animals there. So it might take a while for them to come into contact because remember they're just moving randomly. So it might take a little while for them to actually come into contact. So what we can do, if we want to make it look a bit more like real life, 
in a coral reef like this, you wouldn't normally have just one fish, you'd have lots of fish. So if you want to make it so that you've got lots of different fish floating around that the shark can try and eat, if you right click on your mouse or your mouse pad onto the fish, you can duplicate it and you will get fish2. And fish2 has exactly the same code as fish1. So it will disappear if it's caught by the shark. So I'm going to duplicate my fish and I'm going to have quite a few fish because at coral reefs you would get lots and lots of fish swimming around. And I mentioned before about changing the costumes. So now I'm going to click on my fish too. And if you go up to here and go to costumes, you can see I've got these different coloured fish and I can choose a different type of fish. So it will still have the code the same, but it looks different. It's got a different costume. So I'm going to do that with a few of my fish. I'm going to pick some different costumes so that we've got some different types of fish. Um, and I'm going to go through and you can see my fish changing there. What you can also do in the costume section is you can actually change them and design the animals a bit more yourself. So if you wanted to change the colour of the fish, you can choose a colour and you can use the fill block or the paintbrush to add to your fish. So I've changed that fish there. So have a play with this and you can do that with all of the different animals. If you go into costumes, you can have a play of how they look. Um, so if we go back now to my programme, I've now got lots of fish. So when we play it, we can see that there's more chance of the shark coming into contact with the fish. And when it does, the fish disappears as if it's been eaten by the shark. Here we go. Uh, one last adjustment you can make to your food chain model is if you would decide you want to make it more into a game and have it a bit more interactive, you can change your predator and you can play as the predator. So at the moment, all of our different animals are floating around to random positions, but what you can do is set your predator, so in my case it's the shark, to follow the mouse pointer. So now I can move the mouse around and the shark will travel to where I put the mouse and I can try and guess where the fish are going to end up for my shark to eat it. So if I play it now, I've got my mouse down here, the shark's going to come down here, yep, and it's managed to capture fish. But remember the fish are moving too, so it's quite tricky to try and predict where the fish will end up next. But that's how you can do it with your mouse pointer there. And you can see if you click on this screen here, this button here, it brings it up slightly larger so that you can play it on a bigger screen and try and catch those fish. Here we go. So that is your food chain in Scratch. Um, don't forget to share them with us if you do make one. If you want to share it with us on social media, we are at Technocamps. And you can also take the quiz that goes along with this activity pack to earn some points and try and get on the leaderboard. So thank you very much for taking part in this activity pack. I hope you enjoyed it.